What's up guys, this is Sean Tan and welcome to another episode of the Yihung Podcast and today we will talk about auction properties. This has been a very very hot request from a lot of people right in the comment sections and I know but it took me a while to really like re-update my knowledge about auction property because back then like 10, 12 years ago, I always hang out around auction houses. So I've seen the dodgy stuff, I've seen the underground stuff, yes. But now things are different already. But before that, let's start with the most basic stuff. So what are auction properties? They are also known as distressed properties. And when a lot of people teach you about buying properties, right? a lot of people don't talk about this because once you miss three months of your installments, three months only, out of 35 years, you just need to miss three months consecutively. You will receive a pink letter from your respective bank and it means that your property will be up for auction. And this figure is also indicated in your secrets report. So if you were to go to CTOS to generate your entire financial report card, right, you will see that there will be figures like the one, two, three one. So that means the number of months that you have missed in terms of payment and it affects your loan application. So that's how banks read your report card. Once you submit for loan application, this is the thing that read. And when you have three, you will be issued a pink letter. Then your bank will send instructions to the high court and demand that this property to be auctioned off. And a more common term nowadays where I see in the marketplace is called NPL, non-performing loans. So the entire process from a property that you missed three months payment, right, up to the auction hall, it's going to take around six to eight months. That's why I mentioned like the previous MCO, right, a lot of people would like expect a lot of new properties to be appeared in the auction market. In my opinion, not yet. Because the first MCO, we had a moratorium. No one needed to pay installments, so I think it's fine. If it's for MCO number two, we will only see around six to seven months later. Before the property is to be put up to the auction, what banks do is they will get valuers to provide the market price for that respective property. For example, irregardless whatever your SBA says, banks will determine the market price in accordance to valuation reports prepared by professionals. So when do this auction takes place? Respective banks, they will have respective auction halls or auctioneers to conduct the auction in auction halls. So there will be a list of properties and they will just let it out, right? They will publish it and then agents will do the running. If you go to Facebook page, right, actually a lot, but all of them actually try to sell the same properties from the same listing. And back in the days, as I mentioned, right, all this takes place physically. Hence, there can be a lot of site arrangements, right? It means that if only you and I were to bid this property, right? I will try to not go into bidding, actually. I will just tell you, you know what? If you don't bid, I will pay you this amount of money. And if I were to get the properties, I will pay you cash straight. Well, sometimes it won't work because the other person, which is you, who really wants the property that badly, then maybe you counter offer me, but like, then, okay, lo, maybe I think, maybe we don't then. If we both don't and we both really want the properties, where it always happens, most of the time, they will outbid each other, right? And the price surpass market value, which is like crazy. But now, everything is conducted online, okay? Then the question is, how do you get into the auction process, right? Let's say if you were to see a property, the market value is at 360,000 for an apartment in Kapong, for example, right? What you need to do is you need to pay up 10%, which is 36,000 in order to qualify yourself for, as a bidder. As things are conducted online now, you will have the code and things like that to really bid. They'll really tell you the time and date and you will be controlling yourself. If you cannot do so, you can actually appoint the agent to bid for you. But what will need to happen is you need to tell them your reserve price. Maximum 360,000, right? My max price, 400. Anything more than 400, forget about it. And then the agent will do it for you, provided you authorize him to do it for you. So after you bid, if you lose, you get back your money. If you win, immediately you will proceed to the SPA signing with the bank because the seller is actually the bank. So that 10% will be included as the down payment and the remaining 90% you will need to get a loan or an end financier to pay up for this. And this process needs to be settled around 90 to 120 days, just like sub-sales. So the misunderstanding 
often happens around here. Yes, the market value is actually 500,000 for the same apartment, right? But now it's bidding at 360. Let's say I want it at 380,000, right? So 90%, I will need to take 342,000 out as a loan. I will need to go and apply from banks, right? A lot of people will think that, oh, the 90%, right? I can actually get 90% from the market value, which is 500,000. No you only can apply loan in accordance to your SPA price. Again, you don't get to have like 90% of 500,000, then you cash out 450 to pay up 380,000 to the bank, then you have 70,000 extra. It doesn't work that way. This auction process requires a lot of capital, hard, cold cash. Then part of the risk as well is when you couldn't get the financing. Let's say in 90 to 120 days, right? The banks are not loaning you 90%. They only loan you maybe 70% and you need to pay the difference and you don't have enough cash to do so. Then it's quite troublesome. But you can always request for extension and you just slowly try to figure out where to get money. Lah. Then what are the common questions around auction properties, right? Number one, are you able to visit the property? The answer is yes provided you know the right agent. So here by whatever notes that I've just made, right, I've updated myself by consulting this guy called Jeff on Facebook. He's an agent that focuses a lot on auction properties. Really nice dude, very friendly dude. So do check out his Facebook page. I'll put his link in the description below. Go check it out. And if you really want to go and bid, right, just say hi, this is from Sean's channel and he will know what to do. So agents like Jeff, he is able to like bring you to site visit. And what do we want to see in that site visit, right? Number one, the maintenance fees. Are there any outstanding maintenance fees? Because most of the time when the property is distressed, right, it may be left empty maybe eight to nine months and the nine months of maintenance fees, let's say per month, 500 is a 4,005. Some can be empty for two to three years and we have seen maintenance fees is around 160,000. And because of that, you will need to take note on the form, right? On the offer of sale, right? Some, some, some document like that, I forgot what is it called. There'll be a clause describing whether the bank is going to pay up for the maintenance or not. Some they cover half, they, some they cover full. It means that when you buy, the bank will settle all the maintenance fees. So that's, that's something to take note. The other thing is when you go to site visit, is the unit occupied. So it can be tenant, it can be owner. I personally prefer it to be empty because I'd rather deal with things rather than humans. <laughs> it can get really troublesome when emotion starts kicking in. It's because of you, the entire family loses their house and things like that. It can get pretty drama. But in accordance to Jeff, so this is the difference between good agent and bad agent. He will then find out, is he a tenant or is he the owner? And what we also worry is that maybe the owner has hatred for you as a buyer because you made him lose his house, apparently, right? He will try to somewhat sabotage and damage the house that you just bought. So all these kind of soft skills and discussion and things like that, again, unless you're very experienced yourself, an experienced agent will be very, very helpful. Another risk to be noted would be as is, where is basis. So this is a very common term that real estate people use, right? It means that you will buy the unit as per its ready condition now. Let's say it's renovated, then it's renovated. If it's not renovated, then it's not renovated. If it's damaged, then you will just need to live with it. There's no way you can go actually go into the unit and see unless you're lucky that the tenant lets you see. If not, you can only judge from afar especially for those mansions that is being auctioned, right? You can only somewhat guess the internal condition of the house. So that's the risk of auction properties. Lah. But the main thing is why a lot of people are pretty crazy on auction properties. None other than the price. So the price is the most genuine price. So I always say that rental is one of the most genuine indicator of the market. The next would be auction property price. Whatever new property price that we are buying right now, right? Those includes all the promotion, including all the free SPA, free MOT, free this, free that, free everything, right? Hence that SPA price is often inflated. But when you come to the auction market, no one cares. I will buy at a price that I think it's right. So what happens when there are no bidders that made an offer? For example, four bidders registered for the auction, property A and the market price is 500,000. In the end, no one bids what happens. The bank will then reduce its price for the market price that the valuers provide them. So 500,000 may be now 10% down, 450. Second round, 
no one beats because it's still so expensive. Sub sale is only 460, so it wouldn't make sense for me to buy 450 at auction price, right? Okay, third round, 410, no one beats. Then it goes down. Finally, 360,000, and we all go in and beat. So sometimes when we beat, right, when you have genuine beaters who really wants to buy the unit, it may shoot up to 450,000 again. So not necessarily auction property, you will get the unit at the price that you want. So it's a skill to know whether like, okay, I can actually go in at round four or round three before, I don't have to really wait until round five. So when you ask for advice regarding auction properties, right? When you ask elderly, like 40, 50 year olds, right? They will always say no because it's, pretty dodgy. The process is not really regulated. It's always very messy in the auction hall. I've been there. I know it, right? It's really insane. And you don't know who's the real bidder, who is just actors and things like that. A lot of this kind of thing. Right? And the property you get, right? Often the time, there are haunted stories about it. They'll find things that you don't really want in the unit. Hence, it's not preferred. But in our current context right now, a lot of auction properties are actually new. It means because of irresponsible investors and things like that they buy things that they cannot afford they buy four five six units and then they cannot sustain the installment for more than three months and the renter just cannot cover the installment right so it's pretty common right now in the auction hall we will see like four units from one owner five units from one owner so these are the units that i personally think is okay because they are new after discussing with jeff for a very very long time right i bugged him a lot <laughs> I have a few observations. Lah. So number one, if a particular project has a lot of auction units, right, will it affect the market value of the existing products? The answer is yes. Maybe for example, like A project, right? A project in Tutama just hand over and within three to four months, right, there are a lot of auction units being pushed out already. But they are still developer units, they are sub sale units, they are auction units. Guess which one will be the cheapest? Of course, the one where the price is actually set by the market. So when you often have these kind of units being cleared off, whatever units that you hold or the developer holds will be pretty hard to sell unless there's special promotion given by the developer. So as a owner, as an early investor that bought into the project, right? What can I do? I'm pretty much, I, I can't really do a lot of things. And that is the risk of buying an investment oriented property. So investment oriented properties where you have a lot of investors, no one really moved in. Everybody just hoping for Airbnb and things like that. And the promotions that I will prepare as a developer to entice investors will come from a financial point of view. It needs to make sense where they don't have to cough out anything. They even have cash bags and things like that, right? So they can buy multiple in one go. And this is often the result of those, especially in this current pandemic moment. Uh. But a lot of properties, when they sell you, right, they use the rental yield of an Airbnb usage property. Not very good. Second observation I have is that as a first-time buyer, is it advisable to go into auction properties? To me now, it's pretty transparent already because if you deal with responsible agents like Jeff, he will guide you step by step, but you have not so good agents as well where you also don't know what you should do and things like that. And when you get into a situation where it involves land matters, right? For example, like the strata title is actually being caveated, then you can only buy using cash, but the agent didn't tell you, then you put in your 10% already, then you realize that no bank is going to finance this particular property because there's a private caveat, the owner still owes people a lot of money Money, hence they cannot deal your 10% burn. There's also another story that I followed, right? The land owner and the house owners are two different person. So when they publish the ad, right, it's a house on a land, of course, right? It's 800,000 in an area where it's generally 1.5 million. Then everybody like, oh, go crazy. They will just put 80,000 and walk into the auction hall. Guess what? They are bidding for the building but the land belongs to someone else. So this kind of deals the bank will never finance unless you have cash to actually buy the land directly from the owner himself. Lah. If not, this deal is not going to happen. And guess what? They're 10% burn. So back to the first time home buyer, right? It really depends on the knowledge level and your money level. Lah. <laughs> Money level means that how much money you have in your bank account and how ready are you. If you have zero or if you have merely six months of emergency fund, 
you don't really have capital, new properties will be the way for you. Lah. If you have some level of capital, like for people who are in their 30s to 50s, right? I can actually compare between sub-sale properties and auction properties now because auction properties are also new ones already. It's not like because they stay there, then their business becomes so bad, the feng shui is so bad, then you go and buy. These kind of stories are not as valid as before. Third observation I had, auction properties happens a lot on residential properties, especially high-rise, yes, and residential areas that are very, very far away. So the high rises we know, these are investors that are over geared themselves and now they cannot sustain, hence auction. But homes, very beautiful homes that people buy for own stay. Then when they are auctioned, right, what happens is after auction, the owner still owe money to the bank. Again, because I buy this house, I bought it at 1.6 million. I took a loan at 1.44 million. The auction price is only 900000 So even if my property got auctioned off 1.44 minus 900000 I still owe the bank 500000 My house got sold off <laughs> and I still owe the bank money. And this is the danger of buying dream homes that are further away from the CBD because there's no real value to justify its price. Not like when you have buildings, right? Let's say the renter can actually generate 5% ROI on the price of the property that's being auctioned then it makes a lot of sense. Sure got a lot of bidders man, because investors all use calculator one man. But if it's a home, right, then it's pretty tough. And I guess that's all for this session. I hope it has been helpful and enlightening because it took me a long time to actually revise all of my notes, to check back with my lecturer, to check with industry experts in presenting you the most accurate form that I understand. And once again, shout out to Mr. Jeff. You can actually follow him, reach him at his Facebook page. Again, I will put it in the description down below. And if you're really waiting for the COVID waves of stocks into the auction market, not there yet, but generally they will always be a percentage of auction units in the market and with that thank you very much for listening and if you really like this episode like it share it and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is Sean Tan.